We are in Tombstone, Arizona. That's the town of Tombstone right there. Got the Gerard mine right in front of me, which we're just about to enter. I want to show you a couple interesting artifacts up here scattered on the hillside. You can see the old bottle tops and things like that. There's tobacco tin back there. Good stuff. And then the mine again. This is a, an old stope. We're enter the mine in. There's a view of the surrounding desert. All right, let's get in there, Andrew. Okay. Dropping down into the Gerard mine here. As you see, it's a little bit of a crawl. Well, the funny thing is, I cleared a bunch of material out of here. It used to be a belly crawl. Nice. <laughs> Gotta love those belly crawls. I'm gonna need both hands for this one, so I'll turn the camera off and uh, pick up when I can start filming again. We just slid in from there. Already getting down at some stopes here. As you can see, got stuff running off in different directions. You can feel some decent airflow. You see, we're just sort of twisting our way down. Oh, I'm glad you got that light. Yeah, That's a good little stove. Nice and colorful. Yep. Got a pillar right there. We came back through that area. Interesting. Look at the shape of this scope. Yeah, it's fascinating. I was kind of picking up on that. You can see it better from here, though. That's the top of one of the anticlines here. That's really interesting. Yeah. I've never seen one like that before, a shape like that. Well, we have quite a few here that are like that. Got that nice arch to them. It's interesting. Each area, you know, the mining techniques can be similar, but each one is still unique just because of the geology that's unique to the area. This is, this is a neat section here because you actually had an ore body, and then you had an ore body, and sandwiched in between it was just barren rock. That's really neat. And they, they they left what looks honestly like an eggshell. Yeah. When they excavated it out, left stalls holding it up. Yeah, that's fascinating. And these check out these stalls. They're they're raw timber with the bark still on them. I love those. Yeah. I don't know if there's a technical name for that, or they just have that unmilled wood in there, but I don't know. I think they're really cool looking. Yeah, all of them are like that in here. They're basically just tree trunks that are cut and cut and fit. Good stuff. We'll keep dropping down this way. Go through here. Our, our yeah. Salts are here are all native pine. Native pines. I like it. Nice gobbing on the left here. And on the right. A little room created by the gobbing there. This is pretty wild. Yeah, this used, used to have to go through here, but that's a no-go now. So we go around. So we can get around that mess by going through here. We just came in through there to avoid having to crawl through that. And there's a little sub-level here. You said this is a 50-foot level? Yeah. 50-foot level. You see an old muck sheet right there, and then that you said there was a shaft there that's all caved yeah, in. Yeah, it's, it's caved in, and filled. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, the, this mine was it was done a lot of the same way that a lot of these mines here were done. They were done in short little sub levels and then hand haulage. Right. That's the upper levels of this mine were, and that's where we're headed next. And just dropping down. Up a bit. I got my back dragging on these uh, back of these stoves. I don't know if you can tell on the camera or not, we're just kind of corkscrewing down to get Another to the lower level levels. Here. Another yeah. sub level. Yeah, going off this way. 
Everything's spaced really close. Yeah, I can tell. Yeah, at least until 100 feet, and then it starts to spread out more, more of what we're used to. Right. Drop down the ladder here. That's the ladder we just dropped down right there. There's a featureless drift running back that way. But I noticed when I was peeking down there, an old pair of shoes right here, which is pretty cool. Definitely older mines. Got a nice stope dropping down here, it looks like. Oh yeah, that's pretty spacious. Got a pillar here in front of me. And that's, that's where I would assume you would get down to that stope. And we've got a drift level running off that way. Let's go. Cool. This is all fault gouge that we're in right now. Are you geologists in the audience? Looks like some old strap rail right there. Oh, nice. Little stoke chamber right there. This is dark, dark rock, isn't it? Well, this is actually soot. Oh, it's so okay. Um, there was a fire in this section of the mine in the 40s. Um, this is all soot from that fire. Wow. Got some more, uh, is that strap rail? Yeah, got some more yeah, strap rail right there. Here's why that These drifts are pretty cramped. It's hard to imagine the guys lugging those big stacks full of oh, yeah. ore through here. Yeah. Well, they actually did have the, they, there's a bunch of strap rail stashed there. They did have strap rail all throughout this. Oh, okay. But they're still tight and hard to move through. Yeah. Driving down a ladder. Heard some pigeons. Yep, some pigeons. We just came from there. Got a drift running out that way. And then we've just tied into another mine here called the Tough Nut. Look at those cracks in the rock. Yeah. Wow. And this, uh, I'm assuming this runs to the surface? Yes, under, the surface is 100 feet up that. 100 feet up is the surface that way. And then that looks like it drops down away. Yeah, uh, 150 feet there. It's more than I'd want to fall down. Yeah, not a good thing. And then, that's not it, because we got stuff running off that way too. There's some, some strap rail buried right there. Yeah. We just hiked in from that direction, still on the 100 level of the Tough Nut. And you can see we've come across a fairly large stoke chamber. Drops down. You said this way drops down to the 200? Yeah, if you go around the corner of this pillar, it'll take you to the 200 level. Okay. And this one, oh wow, that drops down quite a way. Yeah, look at that, getting lit up with a big boy light. Nice. Yeah, that's impressive. I think I'm down here. And uh, I'll go down there just a second. I noticed a tobacco tin right here. Uh, safest spot is where 
There's a view of that tobacco tin. And then looking down here. Yeah, there's a better view of those workings across the way. I haven't been down here at all. Huh. I haven't, we need to come in and anchor and repel it, but I haven't been down this section at all. I've been up through there. That leads up into a really extensive sub-level. Huh. A lot of small artifacts up there too. Virgin mine exploring territory down there. There's plenty of virgin all over the place down here. <laughs> yep. And that's to the 200 down there. Oh, okay. So. Cool. We were just shooting down there, come up past that tobacco tin again, and Andrew noticed some burlap here. Remember I was talking about the burlap sacks the miners would be holding the ore out in. There's some right there. All right, we're picking up in that large dope chamber we dropped down into from that ladder there. Originally, we just did a little detour down here. Now we're gonna start winding our way down, see what's down here. Yeah, that's pretty large. I'm sure it's not a little hole right there. Yeah, that's actually that, that dike running through here. They still... Oh. That's where we were looking down from before. Got some muck sheets right there. Ah. Nice little pit right there. This is one of the lenses to the uh, 200. I dropped down to the 200? Yeah. Yeah. It goes down away. And this keeps running back there as well. We'll make our way over there. It's a long stope. Yeah. It's an unusual state, shape for a, a stope. Yeah, it's almost like a tube. Yeah, that's a, kind of the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. Around 800 feet long. 800 feet long is impressive. Yeah. It pinches and widens out multiple times. Like right through here, it pinches again. And then it widens out right after this real big. It's a nice view of those stoles right there. Yeah. Yeah, this is a long, long stove. Even coming in way back there. More burlap. More burlap yeah. on the ground right there. there. Cool. Very, very careful on this uh, ledge here. Good view, stope here, and then just plunge down there. That's impressive. I like all these pillars in here. Yeah. Looks cool. It seems to be the most common method here is supporting the back and the stopes with uh, leading pillars in place. So this is gonna be pretty effective from what I've seen of the old mines that are still standing. Yeah. When they left those pillars in, they're usually intact. Well, you look at this, this is a 30 foot spread here, but this, this back is still very, very, very strong. Yeah. Uh, everything you see on the floor here was all backfill. None of it's fall. Oh, uh, okay. Shot a bunch of stoles. We were looking down through there a minute ago. Huh. 
I'll keep going over here. Too. Some more stoles down there. This is another anticline that comes in here. Oh, can you see it better from down there? Yeah, you can actually see the radius on it. If you look at the stalls, it looks almost like wagon in this spot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that, that, that spot when we were on the 100 level that I said came down here, it comes across there. Oh, no kidding. This is that stope actually does a big corkscrew and comes right in here. Huh. And it's, it looks like a loop. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a sub-level up in here, too. They gobbed up and it goes back in there a ways. Okay. So, but yeah, if we would have gone down that stope off the 100 level. We would have hit this. Yeah, you come right up on this ledge, which, I mean, it's it's pretty nasty. You climb up, this is a 30-foot hole underneath it, but you can scale across that ledge and get out here. Huh. Good to have options. Mm -hmm. That's another way out if we happen to not be able to get up to where we came down. Yeah. Like I say, always good to have options. There's a few places in here where you can find multiple exits. Yeah, I'll it's bet. The redundancy there is really good. See, it keeps running ahead. That We're way. Almost to the bottom of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. We've just been wrapping our way down. We're continuing this way. Old V8 can. That's older than one I've ever seen, so maybe some of the audience will know how old that is. But that's an old one for sure. We just twisted our way down through there, came down this ladder, and are now on the Gerard 200. See our stuff running off that way. These timbers here. And then stuff running off this way as well. Go check this out. Nice breeze down here, I like that. Yeah, this is the boundary between the Gerard and Tough Nut right here. Okay. So they, they actually punched through the stope and came up. And there's roughly a six foot difference between the two levels. That running off down there is, is the 200 level of the Tough Nut. Down that way? Yeah. Huh. That's impressive how they're able to be so precise underground with the tools and technology at the time. If you look up right here, you can see our wagon wheel stalls that are right above us. Oh, I gotta get down there and see that. Yeah. We were looking up there before, and if you remember those wagon wheel stalls, that's what we were seeing before, so we're underneath those now. See, I'm holding back a lot of rock right there. And we're gonna keep dropping down this way. Ah. See some dots right there. They would track the ore car loads with those dots. Sometimes one dot would represent one load, sometimes it would represent 10. And I've heard some mines where it even represents 100, which is a lot. Got great stope action here. It's all a stope in here. Jeez. How far up is that running? About nine feet. Man. What a shot, that's great. Yeah, you still got your stalls on the other side here, but there's, there's still work platforms all over these stalls. Wow. Right there. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. right there, yeah. See, he's talking about the platforms the miners would use to get around and, and work off of. Usually those are rotted out or caved, so it's really interesting to see that. It's nice here in Arizona, everything's dry mostly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that's really neat. Oh, got some track right there. Drifting off that way with some track. Let's go this way. And then, just to reorient you, came in from that way. So yeah, let's go check this out. Coming down this drift where the track is. Oh, strap rail. 1880s. Nice. See, you guys that are regular viewers of mine you usually see this when the wood's all rotted out. So you, or it's underwater, so you rarely get a good view of it. But you can see really clearly here, I've got those boards down, roughly two by four size, and got those straps on top. So nice to see an example of it that's easily viewed. It was a repair they did in later years. Huh. Yeah, like you said, you transition over to more conventional rail, and then jump back on the strap rail. Looks like we lost our rail. 
sort of lost it. During World War II, did they hit the uh, underground sections as well for the rail and such? Yeah. Okay. Some of it. Is there a turnaround here at one point? Yeah. This looks cheap. Yeah, this is awesome. There's a junction here. Stuff going off that way, straight, and behind them right there. There's intact rail on all three of these strips. That's really cool. Look at that. Oh, that's a great scene. How photogenic is that? Yeah, that is neat. I love that kind of stuff. Look, there was a fire down here too, no? Yeah, the, the entire the entire mine burned in this section all the way down to oh, 400, geez. 500 feet. So all that soot just, I mean, some of it's really thick on this stuff. Oh, geez. Yeah, it's almost like uh, over the years of the moisture getting into it, it's turned into a, like a crust. Yeah, it's, I see it's mixing with the dust and such. Mm. That's wild. Huh, it's got a good echo still. Yep. Lots of bits and pieces of stuff down here. Huh. Old box of uh, Lucky Strikes. I like it. Yeah, it is black in here. This is crazy. Oh, wow, what a shot. Yeah, this is the bottom of one of the winds as it's up in that stope on the 100. What a shot, that's really cool. That went a job coming down this one. Yeah. yeah. Or getting stuff up it too. Yeah. How'd they do that? Now this, I don't know if they were hauling up this or not. Ah. It's, it's hard to tell. Could've just been for access. Yeah, I mean, at some point they probably were hauling buckets up this, but all that infrastructure's been torn out. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Jeez. That's a dead end and a collapse back there. Okay. Yeah. You said it's a dead end and a collapse back there, if you yeah. didn't hear that. Little mini pillar right here. Yep. That's cool. Good stuff. Yeah. We've been coming in that way for a while and have gotten to the shaft that we saw earlier. This is the 200 level of the shaft. If you remember earlier, we were looking up that way, up at the 100. A bunch of pigeons down here. There's feathers and pigeon feces all over the place. But yeah, they like to nest in the vertical shafts, which is interesting. It's hard to imagine them doing that in the dark, but they do pretty successfully. There's one there, a bunch of pigeons scattered about farther down. And then that's, that's not the bottom of the shaft, that's a plug that's in the shaft. We're in the 200 now, and it's thought that this dropped down to the 500, but you estimate that's 30, 40 feet thick, Andrew? Yeah, probably at least. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to go dancing on that, but you also wouldn't get through it, so. Yeah. Interesting. Tough to imagine those guys dropping up and down this all the time. You know, it looks like a fairly primitive shaft, but. So this you had a three compartment. Yeah. They had uh, two cages running in this with a ladder in Manway. Interesting. I mean, it's all the infrastructure is gone, so it's interesting to see it in its raw state like this. Interesting. Oh, pigeons flying around. Sorry, I didn't get that on video. You can hear them probably in the video. Yeah. Pigeons. See all the feathers on the ground? It's. There's a drift running off this way. Doesn't look like it goes anywhere. It does actually. Oh, does it? Yeah, that one actually goes out about close to a thousand feet. No, no kidding. And there's stopes, side drifts, access to lower areas and that, and all over the place out there along with um, access to some sub-level stopes and a couple of buried inclines that go to the surface. Wow. See, that's why you should never assume anything in the underground mines, guys. Exactly. That's that drift I made the mistaken assumption about. We're gonna be checking this one out. If nothing else, this one's easier to get down from the looks of it. Huh, a little drift right there. And, oh, some good infrastructure overhead. See, they've, uh, they're helping support that with that strap right there. I don't know how much 
More than likely old strap rail too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see you get an idea of how much rock is holding back just by looking at that right there. There's a lot of weight over us in these old mines. This is a photogenic looking uh, section right here. Oh yeah, I'll take it back there a little ways. Ah, photogenic. Didn't say I want to crawl <laughs> through it, but yeah. it's photogenic. Yeah. Uh, the maps we have, this drift actually goes out there probably 700 feet. Oh, no kidding. But, I mean, it, it, I, I've never personally wanted to go into this, and I, I would never want, I would never do it. That's just because of how unstable this is. Yeah, it'd be a tough crawl. Yeah, and I, I'd be afraid of bumping anything in this. Yeah. Not saying I haven't done dumb shit like that before, but... <laughs> Yeah, this doesn't look appealing. Nothing else. Mm -mm. It's got those cool old uh, unmilled timbers. Yeah, it's more, it's more raw pine with bark on it. Yeah, I like it. And those are at least 100 years old. Probably almost 150, right? 140. 140, 140 yeah. That's yeah. awesome. It's amazing how well this preserved down here. Quick look at the rock here. Some really solid gobbing there on the sides. I haven't really been talking about that, but that's... Uh, Quality gobbin. What do you got there? The top of an old Folgers can. Huh. You can kind of see the, it's hard to see in the light, but you can definitely see the, yeah, the coffee the, cup. Exactly. Wow. This one runs back and hits a cave stove, which is about a one foot haul, hole that can be crawled through for air. So that's it for that. We just checked out that section. We are back at the 200 level of the shaft here. And to my embarrassment, we're going down the one that I assumed went nowhere. Oh, nice. Old tobacco tin. Prince Albert. Yeah. Light's a bit too bright. There we go. That's great. I love seeing those. We've got a lot of them down here. Yeah. That's nice that they, you know, have a site like this, the looters haven't picked over. Yeah, they, they've hit the upper levels, kind of. Um, the lower stuff is relatively untouched. That's great. A little drift right there. Ah. Little pocket winds in there. So this is, this is actually a punch through into a sub-level stope system that's right underneath us. It's actually just as big as the one we hiked down through. No kidding. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm assuming they did, they made this punch through for air because there is airflow down into yeah, it. Yeah, I can I can feel a little bit. And I, I've way. I've come up from the bottom here underneath this level and actually crawled into in, up into this hole and got to the bottom of this. Huh. So. That's a nice scene right there. Very cool. See how far that thing goes. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, that's a good run. That's a good. 200 300 feet before a turn yeah yeah oh, that's impressive careful through here yeah oh. ah looks, oh, like looks like our resident predator has been eating well resident predator yep um we have badgers and oh, no we kidding. have ringtail cats in here Oh, that's impressive. Yeah. That would be awesome to see a badger underground. I've seen I've seen the badger we have. Have um, you really? It's not good. He's not very friendly. No, badgers are tough. Yeah. I believe they're members of the same family as wolverines, actually. Yeah. There's another place where that there's another place where the, that stove punches up into here. Wow. It's neat seeing stuff like that just shooting off down. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's stuff on the side here that goes up that's been filled. Ah, these are old, old timbers, you guys. The Myers that put these in are long gone. Stope over here. Oh wow. That. That's a great view. That actually goes up and, and turns vertical and connects to the 100 level as well. Huh. 
So we haven't been able to navigate it just because it's vertical. Right. Huh. Lots of airflow down here from these places. Still keeps going. 